into consciousness for the first time, there was only pure darkness surrounding me. At first, it appeared comforting, easing the pain that ran through my entire body. It was gentle, and numbing at the same time. Like a blanket, it soothed my tired being, promising comfort, happiness, and mercy. All of this is irrelevant. I need to figure out what happened. What was it? Was I hurt in a skirmish with humans? It would explain why I feel so horrible. No, the war is over. We're trapped in the underground now. I should quit ignoring that information. What could have happened here anyway? Did humans declare war again and attack our cities? That's not it as well. Think, old man, think! Old man! Hold on! Are you alright? Stay with me! Stay with me! Yes, sir! Although I remember what caused this course of events. There isn't much I could do to fix something like that. Time is running out. The second time I woke up in the abyss, I couldn't even dwell on a sensation of relief. There was none. Something was wrong. No, discard that thought. Everything was wrong. I should be dead by now. I saw my own soul tearing itself to pieces. I saw myself turning into dust. Why am I still alive? The experiment failed. Is it some sort of side effect? What was I researching? What could possibly keep a monster alive in such crucial condition? The will to keep living. Determination, was it? I made something to test it out. I was sure in my calculations, including potential observational error. Was it off? Something went very wrong. Was it that off? What is that place? I barely can register anything now. Wait, now? Was it now, or...? I feel like I'm losing sensation of time. When have I ended up? Can I get out? Will I get out? Cost me everything. Is this place even real? It can't be real, but at the same time it is! I can feel it real. I... I'm stuck here, am I not? I can't get back! Is this place even real? After the initial shock had passed, I regained my ability to think straight. I tried to make the best out of the situation, attempting to focus on what was right here and right now. As I sat in the empty void, I realized that I had also lost any need for food or water. That was interesting. I can stay here for as long as I have to until... Well, until something happens. But there appeared to be a problem. At one point I realized that I was fading. Not as in dying, but something very close to it. My memory was fading. I acknowledged it once I tried to look around again. It felt like a loop. A very strong sense of deja vu. And continued again, and again, and again. Considering my situation, I decided to take a risk once more, and I summoned my blaster. Fortunately, it worked. We had never used them before for what I was planning, but with some alterations to the design, I managed to store my memory in it. It was the best idea I could think of. After that process, I received a kind surprise. Blaster became sentient. They weren't a person by the definition, 
Much that amount of information caused their energy to flow in the same way a caster's did. It was keeping me company, and it helped me a lot, entertaining me with science and logical puzzles. It would be great if I were able to tell songs about it. I believe he would try to make his into a living pun generator. It would be great. As the time passed, Blaster noticed I'd been losing more and more of my memories. He tried to hook some information from my head. At first it worked, but lately it has been becoming harder to even recognize him as my creation. He is disappearing, as I am. Sadly, I can't do much to keep it stable until the very end. Seeing as it kept all my memories, even when I was obviously losing them, filled me with hope. Maybe one day, I'll be able to get back. It's dark. It's always dark. Everywhere, everywhere, always. Darkness is around me. Darkness is inside me. Am I darkness? Or is it I... I? Maybe us? Who? When? Where? So tired. Can't think. So quiet. Gave me... what was that? Time? Yes, it was time. I can feel how... Before that, and now? So strange. Do I want to keep it? Too tired. Can't think. Rest. Yeah, we'll be strong. The voices... They returned. Something is happening. We'll free everyone. They sound troubled. Sick, right? Why is it here? What do they need? We have to get sick. Where are they? Source before it's too late. I should be going that way. I know at some point that. <coughs> Why on earth is there something solid? But it can't be. How is it possible? It's. It is a wall. I can't see it, but it's right here. Right under my fingers. It's so real. I. I miss that feeling. Oh, how I missed that! I want to get out! It appears there's no holes in the wall. Not a single one, no matter how far I explore it. That means only one thing. I have to make my own. It took me some effort to regain my consciousness. I passed out, didn't I? Might have hit the wall too hard. Where am I, anyway? It appears to be some sort of a closed box. What was the word? A room? I think so. At least it has some color in it instead of blinking darkness. I like that. At first, I was so curious. 
I could stretch my arm and feel the texture of my little room. I could see the mild shadows on the walls. I could even hear voices from outside. I couldn't make most sense of it, but at least it gave me some understanding of what was going on out there. But after some time passed, I realized that outside world was repeating itself, like a broken record. With minor changes, but it was the same. Again and again. I grew weary of that revelation. It felt like time was passing by, and yet it was stuck in a loop. I wasn't able to understand it. So I went back to my slumber. Until something unexpected happened. Someone touched my hand. I got startled, and in a blink of an eye, I was back in the abyss. And I panicked. A lot. my sanity, I realized I wasn't able to do anything to get out. Without a direction, I was stuck here. Again, forever in silence. But I was wrong. Everything functions perfectly without you. One day he vanished without a trace. They say he created the core. I heard voices again. His brilliance was irreplaceable. It makes sense why Asgore took so long to hire a new royal scientist. One day his experiments went wrong and... Familiar voices. <laughs> How can I say so without fear? That thought terrifies me. Will Alphys end up the same way? Well, I needn't gossip. After all... It's rude to talk about someone who's listening. I heard them, and I followed. I was back at the wall, but instead of it, there was a rift. I wasn't sure if it was bad or a good thing, but now there were other thoughts on my mind. The voices, they were new. I think I've heard them before. But at the same time, I wasn't able to remember who they were. My head felt like a mess. I hope that feeling will pass. For now, I should focus. I must get back. The rift felt like it wasn't supposed to let me pass. Not like I needed its permission. I was back in my room. That was a good thing. But I was not alone. The room was supposed to be empty. I was here for a great amount of time. Less than my existence in the void, and yet... There was a person. They were very frightened. But still deep inside them, I sensed something familiar. Somehow I knew they would never leave the room, even if I tried to drive them away. I asked them who they were, and for how long they had been there. They appeared to be surprised. Perhaps it was my voice. It was very harsh, since I had never used it before. Huh? Instead of answering, they tried to reach for something. Something that wasn't there. And yet, the way they did it was too confident. Huh? They looked at me troubled. It seemed like their ability to communicate had disappeared. They understood my question, so I suppose we would have a yes-no conversation. Hmm. I explained my thoughts to them, and they seemed happy about the solution. Mostly happy. They were still very nervous about the whole situation. For a while, we were silent. I couldn't find anything to ask them. 
I was just happy to have some company. After they had calmed down, the person approached me. There was some excitement in their attitude. It was just like a feeling of a success after solving a very hard problem. Or a puzzle. The happiness they felt upon seeing me was too unusual for a random encounter. Have you been looking for me? A small nod for an answer. Hmm. But why? They were definitely questioning my intelligence. Hmm. On a second thought, I couldn't blame them. Uh, forgive me, it's still hard to think straight. I haven't spoken to anyone in a very long time. Please, give me a moment to collect my thoughts. They sat by my side with a reassuring smile. I tried my best to set up a conversation. Do we know each other? They shook their head. So, you must have seen me at some point. A simple nod. Have you been in this room before? A nod again. They got excited. Allow me to think for a while. If they had seen me in this room, it could mean that I should have seen them at some point as well. My head felt very hazy when I tried to access my memory. It was almost as if the void was living there now. Not exactly the most pleasant idea. But still, even when I tried, I couldn't find anything that might have been connected to this person. Supposedly, it happened while I was resting. I am sorry, young one. It seems I cannot remember anything about you. They smiled. I guess they weren't surprised to hear my answer. Although I noticed a glimpse of sadness in their emotions, it felt like I wasn't meeting their expectations. Somewhere deep within me, I knew I should have seen them at least once. But I just couldn't remember. That realization made me feel empty. Was I forgetting something? I didn't think so. And yet, it felt like that. We sat there, in comfortable silence, until eventually they had to leave. They were very reluctant about this, quietly standing there. So I tried to cheer them up, inviting them to return here at some point. Uh. Hmm. Hmm? feel disappointed. Somewhere deep inside you had hopes about that mysterious person, since you had met them under different circumstances. That maybe something was different about that person as well. But he forgot about your existence, just like everybody else. Maybe the flower was right, and there's nothing interesting in this game. Everything is always the same. And yet it's so disappointing. You've put so much effort into finding any clues that'll make the door appear. You feel like you don't want to abandon this idea. But even so, you have your own little mission and that includes reaching the king at some point. So you must press on and complete this game. <sighs> As the cold wind of the ruins ran around you, you realized that you were missing something. It's not here. It's somewhere else. And you know exactly where it is. Realizing that you've made a difference fills you with determination. Golly, 
You sure took your time back there. And here I was, thinking that you grew tired from your constant resets and just gave up. It could be nice, for me. But you wouldn't do anything nice for me, would you? So, what's the hold up? You've seen something that changed your mind about this game? You've decided not to tell Flowey. Eh? Hmm. Oh, you're keeping secrets. I like secrets. I have some of my own. Dark, very dark secrets. I can share my secrets if you tell me yours. It's not like I'm capable of doing anything with this game while you're around. So you can tell me everything. You remain silent. So, if that's the case... Where have you lost your scarf? You remember that it was... <sighs> This is going to be interesting. It's been some time since they left. Days, perhaps? The outside world went into a loop again. But that loop was always the same in duration. I wonder if that's somehow connected to that person I've seen. But it's been so long, I start to doubt if it ever happened. Could it be that I have been seeing things? I've been struggling to keep my eyes open at this point. I have to keep waiting. They've been here at least two times. There definitely will be a third. It's been 84 resets. That idiot did 84 resets. And you know what's the funny part? Nothing happened. They still never got what they wanted. And yet they kept on going. Doing the same thing over... Oh, you want me to buy you some papers and pencils? How wonderful, my child. And over... Kid, if you want my advice, you can carry stuff on your head. So you can shake my hand next time. And over... Do not worry, human. You can return everything when you learn to properly use your inventory. And over again! At this point, they're no different from any of you! Always doing the same thing! That idiot is torturing me! I'm losing my patience, you know? I'm trapped here in this constant loop because of an idiot who stripped me of my powers! And I can't do a damn thing about it! You won! You earned 3 XP and 2 gold. <sighs> well then, if I remember correctly, they should be in the waterfall at this point. Time to pay them a visit. <laughs> so that's it? That door was what kept them resetting? Just a simple, stupid, uh... Wait a minute, I remember this door. I've seen it in a couple of my resets. So there is a room behind it. But it's just a door over a solid wall. Is this some kind of portal? Oh yeah, that's why you can't just burrow into there. This is a joke, right? So you need hands to pull the doorknob and legs to walk inside. And I am the only creature in the entire underground that lacks both! Why is this door even here? It's not supposed to exist! <laughs> you can swear you heard voices. Mm. Mm. Oh, you've returned. <sighs> I apologize, I tozed off a little. It has been a while since our last meeting. Hmm. <laughs> You've brought something. A piece of paper. Oh. How thoughtful of you, young one. Hmm. My name. 
I don't have a name. You don't have a name? Or you don't remember it? I don't have one. I'll call you Mystery Man, then. <laughs> well, if that would suffice. And so we talked. Where are you from? Mm, nowhere is the best way to describe it. Can you tell me about yourself? I'm afraid not. I don't have any past, except from what you've seen. Frisk looked troubled by my answers, like it was something that wasn't supposed to be that way. But they decided not to press this subject and talk about themselves. No, they had so much to write down. I was utterly excited to read what they wanted me to know. Apparently, there are two separated worlds outside this room. One of them being surface, where humans like Frisk live. And the other one was named Underground, a place where creatures called monsters reside. A place covered in snow inside of a mountain? But that's just preposterous. I was curious about the last world, since Frisk mentioned me being a monster as well. Most interesting. There is someone else like me out there. Could you please tell me more about the inhabitants of the underground? Frisk was most pleased by my request. Seems like they care about monsters a great deal. It surely took them some time to write down their reply. There was some information on every monster they knew, but at least five of them had a much more detailed description. Looks like Frisk is good friends with them. Hmm. Are you alright? I am. Just a little tired. It appears there are a lot of great people out there. Perhaps excluding Jerry. He doesn't strike me as a trustworthy creature. <laughs> Want to go outside? So you can meet them. Uh, I... I have never considered such an opportunity. But I am not ready to give you an answer yet. It's fine. It doesn't matter what you will choose. I still want to spend more time with you here. I'm almost out of paper, but I've got some books and other things with me. That's... if you want to. That bag actually seems familiar. No, it's not. I'm just tired. It's not possible for me to be familiar with something like this. Frisk indeed brought some most curious things. This young one was well prepared for a longer meeting. I was mesmerized by a small puzzle they gave me. And we shared some... food. <laughs> but eventually it turned out that I wasn't the only exhausted person. <sighs> it was comfortable not to be alone in this room. It almost felt like a... family. Yes, that's a good word to describe the feeling. Even if thinking about it brought upon me some inner sadness. Almost like I was missing something. Or someone. That weird feeling again. Feeling of being familiar with something I never experienced. Most unnerving. All I know is the void. Its soothing emptiness and indescribable borderlessness. And that I was there, always. All the way back to my very first memory of a concept of time I was in the void. There was nothing before that, and I know it. I was existing only there the whole time. Perhaps even born out of it. Seems like it might be a natural reaction for me to anything or anyone from outside world. Considering it happened even the first time I met Frisk. I felt familiar with them as well, even though I had never seen them before that. Now I have to get used to it now. 
I don't want these strange emotions to affect my interactions with Frisk's friends. Well, at least now my mind is clearer, and I can remember what I really know. That's a good sign. I was, but it was only mere minutes. I feel fine, young one. No need to worry. It's good to hear, but I need to go. I suppose I might want to accompany you for a while. I'm so glad. I'm going to introduce you to my friends, so you can be friends too. <laughs> you are indeed a very friendly person, Frisk. <clears throat> oh dear. That body lacks necessary physical activity. <sighs> I'm ready. I should have realized it sooner. The moment I started walking towards the door, I got a nagging feeling inside my chest. I was under the impression that I was just mildly worried about the new experience. So, I shrugged it off. After all, I felt myself perfectly fine. But I barely stepped inside the small corridor and everything went dark. And now... There is only... What is taking them so long? Is there really that much you can do behind this door? <laughs> Screw it! Screw this door! Screw this idiot! I'm too young to die! <laughs>
kid was weird, and not because they're a human. They always appeared to be one step ahead of everything. Like they already knew what was gonna happen. They knew all the answers to each puzzle Paps had gotten for them. It took him weeks to get some of them prepared. He put some real effort in it and that kid just... walked over them like it was a stroll in the woods. They're either a genius, or they were trying to get past us as fast as they could. I've got a feeling it's the latter. Sons, there you are. Oh, hey, bro. Um, you look troubled. Something on your mind? I still cannot understand why I feel so familiar with that human. And that's not the main reason. Eh? Have you seen my old stuff? You mean from the lab? Yes, I can't find it anywhere. I've checked and double-checked every corner of my room and everything just disappeared. It was there yesterday, but it feels like it's been gone for weeks. And that doesn't make any sense. Ah, uh, bro, don't worry. I'll look around for you. Maybe some random dog got it. These meddling canines. Thank you, brother. I appreciate your help. Now, I can focus on my duty and capture the human. <laughs> he, he's so cool. <sighs> huh? Hmm. <laughs> you know, kid, it's rude. My bro really wished to capture you, and here you are in my room out of all places. <sighs> well, what are your terms? You tell Sons that you both need to get to the waterfall. So you can dodge my bro? <laughs> Sorry, kiddo. Not happening. You say that it's important. I know. I wouldn't have given you the key if it wasn't. But since apparently you know me and Paps, you should probably know I won't let you get past him like that. So you'd better go and talk your way out. I'm not letting my brother down. <sighs> <laughs> Good luck. <sighs> you hope that this reset will work. It's been a while since the last successful one. There must be a way to ignore all the puzzle sequences and just get Sans from first meeting him. No matter how much you love hanging out with Papyrus, interactions with him take too much time. Also, now you have to get some healing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See? That wasn't that bad. It took you only like ten minutes or so. And look. You're at the waterfall now. I didn't even need to do anything. <laughs> so, why exactly do you need a pile of lazy bones like me? You tell Sans that you need him to shortcut there. Hmm. So you need me to dodge Undyne. Are you just trying to get out of Underground the easy way? Because, uh, as far as I know, there's no easy way. So it must be something different. You tell him that it's not your place to tell the reason. You just need to take him to the Grey Door, and he'll understand everything. Door? Here? Last time I checked, there weren't any doors in that area. But whatever floats your boat... Undyne is gonna kill me, though, and you'll have to explain this to Papyrus. So, if you're okay with that, then I'm okay with whatever you need. 
Bet whatever floats your boat. And Dan is gonna kill me, though. And you'll have to explain this to Papyrus. So, if you're okay with that, then I'm okay with whatever you need. Alright, let's go then. Well, here we are. Where to now, kiddo? Oh! Huh? Whoa, kid! Huh. Would you look at that? So there is a great door here. <laughs> Neat. You know, for a simple human, you've got some interesting tricks up your sleeve. I wonder what... This video was sponsored by Undercards, a free Undertale slash Deltarune multiplayer card game. You can find the link in the description below. Even with the elephant in the room, the kid went straight to giving me a couple of books. They were diaries. With all the information concerning multiple resets that Alf and I had written down. Huh. Eh, guess I'll be answering my own questions. Hi, me. You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> You don't even want to know how much effort the kid put into getting your lazy spine here. So I just gave them the key to make their job easier. Anyway, you might want to know what's going on here. That person in the middle of the room is indeed your old man. In all of his current goopy glory. I have no idea how he ended up here out of all places. But it's better that way, considering his condition. And it's bad on every single level. That old man is literally the definition of bad news. Something happened to him, in addition to his melted state. I know he's not planning on waking up. Yet I doubt he'll dust while he's in here. There's still some determination left in him. Seems like he had died before you managed to get it all out. It was enough to keep him alive all this time. Alf surely realized the cause of his melted state, considering her experience with DT. But she decided not to talk about it for now. Oh my god! You weren't joking when you said it was serious, but this! In the form of royal scientists of all people? I wasn't ready for this! Sorry, Al, but I really need your help. But he's a legend! He made Underground the way it is now! I thought he was dead! Well, he's not, but he still can die if we do nothing about it. Come on, Al. Stop jumping out of your skin. Sorry. Alf and I ran a couple of tests on his magic, trying to get a better look at his condition. And it's bad. Did I mention it's all bad? His magic is... wrong. It doesn't work like magic should. It looks broken. It twists around and collapses on itself. His soul produces tremendous amounts of it, and the moment magic separates from him, it just turns to dust. And this brings us to the winner of the biggest bad news. Wait. What do you mean he doesn't have any memories? Ooh. I spoke to him in previous resets, told him about the underground, about you and Papyrus, and he acted like he heard it for the first time. Oh, oh dear. It, it has to be something with his magic, since it always expands, dies, and renews itself. It, even if he looks nearly the same, it's not him anymore on the physical level. Like he has been reborn in the place where he was stuck all this time. M monsters' memories are stored in their magic. A and if it was, it's like a human's brain. 
If some damage happens to it, it, it can't lose connection to its memories. So, so, with his old magic gone, I'm so sorry, Zons. We have to get him out of here first. We can talk about his memory later. Speaking of that, we need to check his soul. I think something is wrong with it, and that's why he can't leave this room. Yeah, seems like that's the reason. Well, I could try to summon it with blue magic, but I'm afraid I'd make more harm than good at this point. Y yeah, additional pressure will only make things worse. We could examine his soul with one of his old machines from the lab, but... We can't bring them here. They won't fit in this small room. How are we gonna get him out of here, then? Hmm, good question. You know, I might have an idea. He's melted, right? What? Well, yes. That means his magic works similarly to amalgamates. And these guys are terrible at keeping their form. But, they can also fit into any crazy place they want. Y yeah Last time Andasmi got stuck in a vending machine. Jeez, I wanna see that. A anyway, if we find a way to force Gaster's body into a smaller container, this might be his ticket out of this place. W what How? Remember the stasis capsules? The ones that keep humans slow- Oh! Sans, you're a genius! <laughs> Thanks, Elf. And so we have done it. This machine is perfectly balanced and ready for the launch. Test the capsule on his magic first. Then you can try to save our old man. All the necessary info on the machine can be found in other... <clears throat> well, there go my lazy days. You sure can't make a skeleton get his workout. I'll go get Al in that capsule, I guess. We'll be back in an hour or so. Watch over the old man for me, okay?